let's take some time to honor the Lord's presence with praise and thanksgiving. We serve the God who gives us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. If you've been in a heavy place, let's just enter into a place of praise. So he is our focus. He is our aspiration. He's the one we worship. We set our eyes on him and lift our hearts to him. high, you are Lord of all, great I am, sovereign ruler, lion of Judah, you are God, you are God, and you're in control, seated high, you are Lord of all, great I am, sovereign Yeah. 
praises going God because your mercies endure forever and ever let's keep that going hallelujah 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 you are worthy God hallelujah in the good times you're faithful in the dark times you're faithful so that's why we won't stop praising your name we won't stop and we won't stop praising up your name and we know that your name is the name that is above every name Jesus is the only name which by we can be saved Lord God that name that tells us that you are a savior Lord God we bless that beautiful name that wonderful name that powerful name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah let's bless the Lord hallelujah we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. We continue to lift up that name, that beautiful name. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. We worship you. You were the word at the beginning. One with God. this morning you didn't want heaven without us you didn't want heaven without so Jesus you Jesus. 
There's no name like Jesus, no other name like Jesus, no other name like Jesus.
saw their names fade away Lifted up church Let all the other names fade away Until there's only you Let all the other names fade away Jesus take your place Jesus take your place there's only you in our lives God till we only see you God till we no longer look at our circumstances or our situations God but we only see you face to face God we thank you for being a sovereign God that you are not surprised by anything that happens in our lives God we thank you that you are in fact in control God we thank you God that you're moving in this time in this season on our behalf God we thank you, God, that you have us in your mind, God. God, we thank you that you have so blessed us for such a time as this. God, that you brought us here for this purpose. God, that your will be done in the earth. God, thank you for your traveling mercies and your grace, God, that just continues to fall on us. Father, that your mercies are new every morning, God. Father, that whatever need I have, God, that you are there for me, that you're there for us individually and collectively, God. We honor you today in this place, God. Father, we lift up those who are sick, God. We pray your healing virtues be theirs, God. We pray for those, God, who are lost, who need a savior, God, that this would be a time of harvest, God, that your word would wax strong in this season, God, through us. Father, we lay down every sin and every weight that besets us, that slows us down, that hinders us from accomplishing the things that you've called us to. God, we thank you for this time. Father, we pray for our leadership. We pray for Pastor Paul and Lady M. God, move by your mist, move by your power. Wherever they are at this time in this season, God, I pray that your choice blessings would be on their heads. God, I pray for a rhema word. God, I pray that your word would, would find us today, God, that we would grow as a result of your word. God, that we would be sensitive to your word today, that we would be sensitive to your presence. God, that we would turn our ears to hear what you would say in this time, in this season, God. We thank you, Father, for this place. We thank you for this house. We thank you for your dear son, Jesus. We thank you for relationships, God, that you have, have reconciled in this time, God. Move today. Your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. the Lord everybody oh y'all can do better than that praise the Lord everybody today is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it I wanted to take the opportunity to be the first to welcome you to our worship service on this Sunday I want to welcome those who are watching online wherever you are around the world in the country uh, welcome to our worship service, and we welcome you who are here in the sanctuary. Uh, God has given us a little reprieve from the atmospheric river flow, because uh, he knew you needed to be here in church today. Uh, and uh, I know that the, the storms are going on out there, maybe some on the other end, but we have a little window today of blessing that God has opened up for us. Amen. 
Amen. I want to say a great thank you to um, Aaron Shepherd and our worship team. Did they do an amazing job to get us into God's presence? Amen. And thank you for uh, that wonderful prayer, Brother Kent, as well. Um, Pastor Paul and Lady M are not here today. They are away uh, celebrating some good time off, some good rest that they needed tremendously, yes. And uh, I would ask if you would just keep them in your prayers. Uh, I know that they would greatly appreciate it. Uh, For those who I haven't had the pleasure of meeting before, I am Pastor Kevin. I'm the associate pastor here at Destiny Christian Fellowship. Um, And pastors allowed me the opportunity to share the word with you this morning. Uh, And so we're going to have a good time in the Lord today. (laughs) Hallelujah. Uh, Before we get to that, before we get to that, there are a few announcements that I need to walk you through. Um, So just pay attention to those if you would. First, uh, with regard to charitable contributions, as we prepare to mail our our, uh, charitable contribution statements to members, to our members and other donors, Please make sure that we have your correct mailing address, email address, and phone numbers. And the simplest way to send us your updated information is to go to our Contact Us page on our website or drop us a quick email to email at destinybayarea.org. Your cooperation with this request is greatly appreciated. Uh, Next is our Next Gen Prayer. There'll be a prayer this Friday at 7.30 in the multipurpose room um, hosted by our Next Gen Ministry, that's N-E-X-X-T, Next Gen Ministry, uh, but all are invited to attend. If you're not familiar, Next Gen is our Gen Z and millennial adult community here at DCF. And so if you'd like to connect with them, you can find them on the Band app. I believe there's a, some info on the screen for you or should be on the screen for you. Uh, or you can email them at next at destinybayarea.org. Um, MOD for our brothers in our church. I got one woohoo, we'll go with that. All men are invited to join us via Zoom this Saturday morning, January 14th at 9 a.m. for our first Men of Destiny gathering of 2023. Um, if you haven't been there, brothers, and you, this is your first time even hearing about MOD, it's a great gathering opportunity for our brothers to get together. We get together in a large session Kind of, uh, kind of open up and begin in prayer, and then we break out into small groups by, by Zoom, um, and then we get into the Word and go through our weekly um, sermon outlines and talk and connect as brothers. And it is a time of iron sharpening iron, brothers getting together and working through some of the important issues we have to work through in our lives as men. Um, and so if you're not on the e-blast list and you want to receive the Zoom login information, please also go to our Contact Us section on the website and provide your name and your email address. Um, Next is child dedication. Uh, That'll take place on next Sunday during our worship service. Uh, This is a time we set aside periodically to pray with Christian parents and their very young children, primarily infants to, to 24 years old. However, if your child is older and you would like to have them prayed for, please sign up today by going to the website and clicking on the child dedications um, uh, slider, slider. Uh, and I believe there's a graphic that should be up on the screen telling you about that also. And then finally, the last announcement is Grief Share. Um, DCF is once again sponsoring Grief Share beginning Tuesday, February 7th, so make, mark, make sure you mark your calendar. Uh, this ministry is a friendly, caring group of people who will walk alongside you through one of life's most difficult experiences. You don't have to go through the grieving process alone. Uh, there's an opportunity for you to join together with others through our Grief Share ministry here. The total cost is $25, which includes registration fee and materials, but don't let the, the cost deter you. There are also scholarships available. So make sure you contact um, our church office uh, and reach out if you know that you need to be there and participate in our Grief Share. Um, that's uh, it for me in terms of the formal announcements. I also had one other announcement that I wanted to share um, with you today, and um, uh, this week I had the wonderful opportunity to celebrate my 25th wedding anniversary with my wife. I can I can tell you that there was there was dinner involved, and uh, and I uh, spent way too much money on my wife to bless her, and there was balloons involved, and there was gifts involved, and there's Starbucks cards and all kinds of things that are involved. I didn't get any of that. I gave it all to her. <laughs> to be a blessing to her. 
Um, if you're not familiar with us uh, and my family, uh, Pastor Paul was a co officiant of our wedding ceremony on January 3rd of 1998, um, alongside uh, Pastor Chris Donia, a White Road Baptist Church in San Jose. It's pri primarily Spanish speaking church, uh, and they co officiated the, ser the service for uh, my wife and myself 25 years ago. Um, and, and I just want to really take a time to recognize my wife. Um, babe, I'm not going to ask. I'm not going to ask you to stand up. She doesn't like the spotlight, so I'm not going to put her because I'll get in trouble later. So I'm not going to do any of that stuff. But I will take the, the public opportunities and time just to talk about you just for a moment, if I could. Um, I just want to tell you some things you might not know about her, but she's been my best friend. Um, for over these many years, and I can't get caught up in talking because I'm about to cry for a moment. Hold on. Keep it together, Pastor Kevin. Um, she's been so kind to me over these many years, and uh, you are truly my best friend. Um, I can tell you that my mom is one of my biggest cheerleaders, but this woman over here has been my biggest cheerleader through ups and downs and highs and lows and everything I've been through in my life. She's always been there, and that's what a friend is supposed to do for you. She's been, also, she's been also a loving wife and a faithful wife, um, and then I appreciate everything that you do in terms of your role as a wife. You are committed to uh, our, our commitment and our relationship, and, and those vows that you took 25 years ago, you still hold those true today, and so I love you for that so much. Um, she's also a wonderful mother to my son, and that's what I knew about her when I was dating her. I was like, she can take care of some kids, I can just tell. <laughs> She's a great mom to our son. You're doing a great job taking care of our son and raising him and blessing him. And, and he's such a wonderful boy, and I know he's such a blessing to you as well. Um, and, uh, and how you care for our home and take care. That woman can clean. <laughs> Better than anybody I've ever seen in my whole life takes care of your household. And, and uh, man, our house is immaculate. I'm going to get in trouble later because I'm talking too much now, I know. But it's going to be later when I get in trouble, so that's all right. And she's a great daughter to her mom. I don't know if you know, she's a, she's a daughter to her mom. Um, she's a great daughter, a great uh, co-worker to anybody she's ever worked with, and she's a great woman of God. And I want y'all to know that about that woman right there. That's why I can't really introduce her to a lot of people, because they start loving her more than me. And some of y'all in the church are guilty of that, too. too. Y'all walk right past me and go to Sister Connie. But I'm just kidding about that. Um, but I just wanted to just really take time to acknowledge her um, and uh, all she's done for me and really been a blessing to me and to my family over these many years. So would you give her another round of applause, too? All right, we got to transition now to tithes and offerings. Um, and I want to take the time on behalf of Pastor Paul and the leadership of this church to thank you so much, all of our members and supporters, for your generous giving. It's because of you, um, uh, DCF, that you are making a real difference in the lives of people, not just locally, but nationally and internationally. Um, and if you're not familiar with our style of giving here, there are multiple ways that you can give. You can give throughout uh, our time of uh, meet and greet. You can give through the different boxes tithing boxes that are here in the sanctuary and throughout the building. Um, you can also give online. It's a safe, easy, convenient way for you to give. Um, and you can give through the mail. So there's some great opportunities there for you to give. I'm going to ask that you would stand so that we can pray over our tithes and offerings, and then we'll just move into a time of meet and greet before we get into the message for today. Let's pray together. Uh, Lord, uh, we just are so grateful to you. Thank you that you bless us in so many ways. And we thank you that we have this opportunity right now to bless you back through our tithes and offerings, through our giving, Lord. We give uh, out of great hearts, God, so that we can sow seeds into the kingdom to bless people um, and touch lives and transfer lives, lives around the world. Thank you that this ministry um, doesn't just reach locally, but now it's an international ministry and our tithes reach people everywhere. And so we thank you for the wonderful, generous givers here today. Thank you that the, the, uh, for the gifts that will be given to God. We pray that they would just be sown into this ministry and bless people from time now and through eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may take time now to meet and greet. And those of you who are online can meet and greet in the chat as well.
right, praise the Lord. If you can uh, find a seat, if you're here in the sanctuary, we'll get into the word in just a moment here. I did want to take the time before we get started too, just to also, if there's anybody here visiting for the first time, um, we wanted to recognize your presence with us. We're not just a church of members here in California, but we are now in 33 states um, in the United States and seven uh, countries around the world. Um, I do understand that we have a visitor also, at least one visitor from the East Coast here today with us. But if you're here for the first time or you're visiting from out of state, would you just put your hand up so we can just recognize your presence? Let's give them a hand, everybody. Got quite a few folks here today. All right, wonderful, wonderful. I know on behalf of Pastor Paul and our leadership, we thank you that you have decided to join us here today, and uh, we trust that you'll be blessed through God's word um, that's shared with you today here also. Um, I wanted to just pick up on the theme that Pastor Paul began, and if you weren't here on last uh, Sunday, he started talking about that the theme for 2023 was, where do I grow from here? Um, and he's going to continue that on when he returns to church next Sunday. I believe he'll be here next Sunday. Um, but I wanted to pick up on this, this theme that he talked about in terms of growing. Um, and, uh, and that's uh, you know, part and parcel of what we are called to do as Christian believers. Uh, once you get saved, that's the beginning. But God wants us to continually grow throughout our Christian lives. Uh, and I trust that this message will find you right where you are and cause you to begin to grow even before you leave church here today. So I'm going to pray and then we'll just get started. Father, we just thank you for your word. We pray that, uh, God, that you would find us right where we're sitting, right where we are at home, wherever we're listening from, God, that the word would reach our hearts. God, that you would touch our minds, that you would touch every aspect of who we are, cause uh, transformation, God. We don't want to be the same after we're leaving this place, after we're done listening today. And we pray that you would not just only bless us, but that you would give us an overflow, a river of blessings uh, that could only come from you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said together, amen, amen. All right, well, I discovered that there's two kinds of people in the world. You didn't realize it, but there are two kinds of people in the world. There are early morning people, and there are late night people. The early morning people like to get up. They like to get up early in the morning, rise. Maybe you want to get up. They get up and, and do their early morning workout, or they grab their cup of coffee, or they're reading their newspaper early in the morning. I was up at 5 a.m. this morning getting my little morning run because I look at the stars in the morning. I'm there running with the Lord. And so I'm one of those early morning people. And then you got those late night people. We used to call those back in the day night owls. I don't know if they still call them night owls, but they get their best work done at night. And they might be doing their homework or doing some business or just up watching TV uh, late at night. I got some head nods. There's probably some night owls in here. But by a show of your hands, I want to see how many early birds, early morning people are here. Oh, my Lord. We got some. I'm amongst friends and family this morning. Got some early birds here in the church. Two kinds of people. There are introverts and there are extroverts. Uh, I'm a recovering introvert. That's what I like to say. The introverts, they, they like to withdraw. They, they're good to be by themselves. If they're hanging out sometimes, I was this young guy who would be hanging out at whatever social event, and I'm standing against the wall, and there's a bunch of people, and I'm good right where I'm at. I don't got to talk to nobody. I'm just good. Home, we go home by myself, and, and uh, we like to, as a recovering introvert, I know very well, we like to just spend time by ourselves. On the other side of the, the coin are the extroverts. Those are those personalities, they, they get energized by connecting with people. And they're on the go, and they got all kinds of energy, and they're always talking. I don't know about you, know, I know some extroverts, type A personalities, they're always talking all the time. Talk, 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 talk. How many extroverts here are there? Oh, well, we got a few extroverts here. I didn't ask the introverts because they probably wouldn't have said anything back to me. <laughs> but we do have some extroverts in the building. Now, I'm in the middle. I'm about six or seven now, so I become more extroverted. That's what a recovering introvert is. Um, we have two kinds of people. We have coffee drinkers, and we have the more sophisticated tea drinkers. People, coffee drinkers drink uh, all kinds of coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker, so I don't know about the brands of coffee, but I do know that they hang out at Starbucks and Pete's Coffee. I got a head nods on that one. And then us 
tea drinkers, we like to have black tea or green tea, and we are very sophisticated. We have our pinkies out as we're drinking. Um, I see. We won't talk about us sophisticated folks. How many coffee drinkers are here this morning? Got some coffee? That's a good number of coffee. About half of us are coffee drinkers. There's two kinds of people in the world. There are San Francisco 49er fans. And there's fans of other football teams. Got two, two kinds of fans. Now, now we're not just a, a local church. We're a, a national church and an international church. And so I know I don't want to offend anybody. There's fans of all different kinds of football teams. But how many super San Francisco 49er fans are here today? Got some about good number here also. So I don't know if you know where I'm going with this, but there are two kinds of people in the world. You got Christian believers, those who've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. They've given their heart to the Lord and those who have not yet believed in Christ. Um, and so that's where I want us to look this morning. I'm looking at Romans chapter 8, and we're going to look at verses 28 through 39. If you have your Bible, you can open your Bible. If not, we're going to put it up on the screen for you. But this particular passage in Romans is one of the most profound passages about our salvation. I think you'll see uh, that the message this morning is not anything fancy, I don't have all these theological terms for you, but there are some great nuggets that you're going to find. And I want you just to try and lock in and try and capture the little nuggets that God gives to you this morning. Uh, Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to start reading at verse number 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Verse 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And we'll pause our reading there. We're looking at Romans 8, and it's the eighth chapter of the epistle to the Romans in the New Testament in your Christian Bible. Uh, Romans, uh, Paul here is writing to the church of Rome, which had uh, been well established by the time of this letter. Uh, we're right now uh, in this context around the mid-50s AD. Uh, it's the end of Paul's third missionary journey. Um, and, uh, and some consider, if you are a reader of your Bible, some consider Romans the mother of all epistles. It's one of Paul's uh, greatest uh, epistles, one of his greatest writings. Um, if you just take a dive and take a look at it uh, for yourself, it's written like a theological treatise. Going through the first uh, 11 chapters, you'll find all these theological terms and, and Christian terms and, and, and uh, concepts that are all core to our Christian faith. It kind of gives us the what of Christianity. Uh, and um, if I had time, I'd show you that it breaks apart and you get your practical application in the context in chapters 12 and beyond. 
Uh, but it's written in a beautiful, beautiful way. And uh, if you get a time, when you get a time, sit down and read through all of Romans. Uh, it's one of the books in the Bible, and there's all the books that change our lives, but this is one that really impacted my life, really changed me at the very core of who I am as a Christian man. And so the end of chapter 8 comes to this climax where, of Paul's comprehensive presentation of the gospel message. Uh, he shares powerful truths that are central to our Christian faith, uh, and he begins to make the case and leaves no room for doubt that God is sovereign and supreme over everything, over every area of our lives. And so we live um, uh, in a society today that, that likes to make cases for things. We like to debate and we like to argue all kinds of things. I don't know if you've ever seen in the newspaper or whatever, but we like to debate politics, who's this and who's this person. Even during COVID now, we're in debates about where should I wear a mask and should I not wear a mask? Um, and even debate comes into the church. We debate all kinds of issues in our lives in church. Uh, but there's one area that a lot of people weigh in on. I suspect you all might be in that crowd as well, is, is the area of sports. We like to debate sports all the time. Do I have anybody that likes to debate, talk about sports? So y'all ain't being honest right now. <laughs> I'm going to make my case here. We're obsessed with who's the goat. Y'all heard that term before, right? Who's the greatest of all time? Who is the goat? Um, and so if you're talking about hockey, someone would, might, might argue that it's the great Gretzky, Wayne Gretzky, the greatest uh, hockey player of all time. Maybe in baseball, it might be Cal Ripken Jr. Somebody might debate that issue. Um, in, uh, in football, we talk about the seven-time football uh, NFL champion Tom Brady, and there's debate around that. Or it might be even in soccer, it might be the late great Pele or someone of that nature. Uh, in tennis, we talk about Serena Williams. Uh, and my favorite sport, basketball, we talk about Michael Jordan or LeBron James. And we're not going to talk about how that debate in church today. No, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but I came here this morning to, to contend and to argue that there's only one goat. There's, the, there's one who's the greatest of all time. <laughs> see, see we, live out, we leave God out of the equation. And you got to start bringing God into the equation when you're having a debate with some of your friends and say, well, Michael Jordan is probably not the greatest of all time, and neither is LeBron James, but I know one who is the greatest of all time. I don't know. I'm getting ready to preach, and I'm not even in my word yet. He is the greatest. God is the greatest of all times. He's the God over all things. He's the God over all things. That's the subject of this message, God over all things. The, the first letter of, those, of the, the, each one of those words stands for G-O-A-T, GOAT. God is the greatest of all times. And how do I know that? Because it says in my Bible that God is the ruler over everything. There's no one that can stand against him. He is God all by himself. Of him, there is no other. He can do anything and his plans can't be thwarted. I'm in the word right now. His kingdom reigns over all the earth and God does what he pleases. It says that in the Bible. God does what he pleases and he's prepared everything for his purposes. And he's blessed us, and he's the sovereign, and he's the ruler. Watch this. And when he aims at the goal, God never misses. And when it's fourth down and goal to goal, he always scores. He scores a touchdown every time. And when he's up to bat, it's always a home run. I'm talking about God right now. Some of y'all missing a good place to shout right now. And watch this. And when the opposition stands in the way, God dunks on top of his head. I'm talking about head top. That's what I'm talking about. If some of y'all folks don't know what head top is, that's the term in basketball when you get slam dunked on. Because that's what God does. That's what God does. I'm, I'm already preaching better than y'all saying amen. And so I got three points. I got three points I want to share with you and I'm going to be done. But I trust that God's going to help to grow your faith and help you understand who he is. Uh, and that you understand that God is the provider of all the things that you need in your life. Some people still in the church haven't gotten that too. God provides for everything that you need in your life. And this is a God who doesn't just provide you stuff. He provides you all the things that you need in your life. Yeah, I'll take that one hand clap on that right there. Because somebody hears me. Something God's already speaking to somebody. God's already speaking. And so if you want all the things God has for you, you must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the very basic. That's the very foundation. That's my first point. If you're writing, taking notes right now, if you want all the things, all the things God has for you, you must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. 
So if you want to experience God, you must understand who God is. Uh, Paul begins to tell us a little bit more about who God is. But we go back even into Genesis, and we know that God is the creator. God is the one who created the heavens and the earth. Go outside and enjoy his beauty. It's general revelation out there in nature. He created the heavens and the earth. That's what I get to do when I go on my run sometimes. I go up and look at the sky and look up at the stars. Remember when you were little and you, and you laid back? Maybe I went camping or you go out on your, one of your, on your camps and, and you lay back and you look at the stars. You still got to do that as you get older too and, and enjoy the beauty that surrounds you. God created the heavens and the earth. And the one who, uh, he's the one who created the sun and the moon and the stars. This morning while I was out running, it looked like it was a full moon out. It was beautiful. And I said, praise you, God. Do you know that you can praise God even when you're working out, when you're running outside? I'm preaching to somebody right now. You got to take time and really bask in God's presence. And God who said, let there be light. And there was light. And God who created the plants and the animals and, and all living creatures. And God created man and woman. And God saw that what he made and he said it was very good. God is our provider, and we can go to him and cast all our cares and concerns on him. He's a good God. And it's God who's a way maker. This is who Paul is talking about. He says God is a way maker. He makes a way out of no way. He opens a door that mo no man can shut. He closes doors that we're not supposed to walk through. That's going to minister to somebody right there. And he's so much more. And he's so much more. And here goes Paul telling us in verse 32, Paul tells us about the God whom he serves. He says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Paul says, God is the one who sacrificed his one and only son. He made the ultimate sacrifice. He gave him up for us so that we could live lives that are free from sin. He gave him up. You know what, give something up. I didn't, you didn't have to pay for anything. He gave him up. It was a free gift for who? It says in the, in the, in the text right there, it says for us all. Not just for me, not just for you, but he gave them to all of us. So you didn't need to pay for the gift. You didn't need to charge any fee. The, gi the gift is free. It's a free gift. How many of y'all like free gifts? It's a free gift from God for somebody here today. He's offering a free gift for you. And he goes on in the second part of verse uh, uh, 32. If you can put that back up on the screen. Paul then asks a question. He says, how will he not also along with him, graciously give us all things. This is where I really want you to focus in today. You see, he, he begins to argue from greater to lesser. And there's an argument he's trying to make here. He says, how will he not, if, if God made the ultimate sacrifice and gave us his one and only son, he gave us his flesh and blood, if he gave us that sacrifice, he did the, the greater sacrifice, why wouldn't he also give you all things? You see the reasoning there? You see the argument? And so if you want to get to the all things, you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Somebody's tracking with me right now. If you want all the things that God has for you, how many, I might not be preaching at the right church. How many of y'all want all the things that God has for you? I'm going to look around this sanctuary. I think I'm in the right place this morning. I want everything that God has for me. I want everything he has for me. So that means I have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I can't walk around having Jesus in my back pocket searching for a nice house and having a big car and having money and having all these things and I hide Jesus away. I don't talk about him to my coworkers. I don't share Christ with anybody else. That's not what God wants. The, the, the word is not to, to be kept secret for yourself. It's supposed to be shared with others so they can be blessed as well. We got too many people in our world today that want all these things, but they, want to, they don't want to put the sun out front. They want to keep sun in the back pocket. I'm talking about it. I'm going to preach about it right now. Can't have all this stuff and not have Christ in the forefront of your life. Paul here is teaching that if you want all things, you must believe in Christ's death and his burial, his resurrection. That's the core tenet of our Christian faith. And so we got to focus on what God is calling us to. He says in verse 34, I don't have this one on the screen, but he says, Christ Jesus who died. This is who he's talking about. Christ Jesus who died and more than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. I don't know about you, but I'm glad somebody was praying for me. I'm glad Jesus was praying for me. It took me out of some stuff when I'm coming up as a young buck. Kept me from some stuff I, I could have gotten in trouble, but it kept me on the right path. This isn't in my notes. This is a free preach right now. But God gets us out of some trouble in our life. I don't know about you. 
I haven't always been a Christian, but he got me out of some trouble. Got me on the right path so I could be a good husband to my wife. So I'd be a good man of God, so I can be a good co-worker. God is praying for us. He's interceding for us. And thank God that there's somebody else that's praying for you along the way, too. That's how some of us got into the kingdom. I don't even, so somebody's even saying right now, I don't even know how I got, became a Christian because somebody prayed for you. Somebody that you didn't know is a grandmother that was clear across the country was praying for, for non-believers and got us into the kingdom. I was ushered into the kingdom by a prayer of a grandma. Somebody was praying for me. And, uh, and it makes us harken back. And I don't know about you, but I wasn't always a Christian. I, ha- I have a BC life, a life before Christ. We all have BC lives, stuff that we did and stuff we're not proud of. And we came out of some stuff and, and we're getting through some stuff. And some of us still getting through some stuff, even as Christians. It harkens me back to the time when, uh, of my salvation. Um, I grew up in a household. Um, it wasn't a Christian household. Uh, I never went to church when I was young. Uh, my parents weren't born-again believers. Um, we didn't pray before dinner or anything of that nature. I gave my life to Christ when I was in college, uh, back in the 80s. And uh, in college, I went to a church on one Sunday with a friend, uh, prayed a prayer of salvation, um, and uh, gave my life to Christ in that very instant. Um, but I wasn't affiliated with any church. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a pastor. And so you know what happens when you're not connected to a church, that you're walking in the wilderness. You still, even as a Christian, you're still acting buck wild, doing whatever you want to do, acting like a heathen, living a heathen lifestyle. I don't know who I'm preaching to right now. That's not what God wants for your life. And so walking in the wilderness as you're walking along, and I found the Bible, I found the Bible while I was on my college campus, read the Bible for the first time. Uh, but many years of getting tired of doing the same things over and over and over again, getting stuck and feeling empty and not having the right things in your life and still uh, not being the person that you want to be. I found Mount Sinai Baptist Church in Washington, D.C., uh, Pastor David Dorham many, many years ago. And, and I said, I can't keep living this lifestyle I'm living any longer. Oh, I guess I'm the only one that was going back living that kind of lifestyle. <laughs> it got too quiet for me. I thought I was the only one. And I got tired and I said, God, I got to give you everything because I haven't given you my all. I got to rededicate myself. And maybe there's somebody here this morning that needs to do that very thing. You need to come back home. There's going to be an invitation at the end where you can just do that. You don't have to wait for any special holiday. So I rededicated my life and I came walking down the aisle just like this and crying in full tears. And I said, I was done. I was tired of being that person. I want to be a different. I want to be transformed, God, whatever that is. So I was reading that Bible for the first time, and John 3.16 popped in. And, and, uh, and so I, I discovered that God so loved the world that he gave us his one and only son, that whosoever shall receive him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I wanted to taste the everlasting life. I wanted to experience what that was. And so God began to speak to me. God began to speak to me as I was learning and growing about him, but still coming through life. Even as a Christian man, growing Christian man, I had some issues. That's right, the pastor had some issues, personal issues. I lacked in character, and I lacked integrity, and I lacked self-discipline, and I lacked self-control. And I said, God, I can't keep calling you God and thinking that I, I really love your son if I'm still going to live out this kind of life. I had some things that were in me that I needed to add to me, and I said, God, whatever you have, I want some of that. So I read in my Bible, it was there in Proverbs 10, 9, it says, the man of integrity walks securely. I didn't know what that meant, but I said, I want to get upright. I want my shoulders to kick back. I want to find out what walking securely is all about. Because when you start getting into the word, you got to take that word and marry it to your mind and then start living it out in your life and watch the transformation begin to happen. God begins to change who we are. And even as Christians, even as growing and more mature Christians, as we're growing and developing, we can still have some attitudes. We still can have frustrations. We still can get angry. I found myself in some of those positions as a young boy of a divorced family. I was in the middle of my parents' marriage, um, spilling out, getting frustrated and angry and having to go through counseling and all kinds of issues. Uh, I experienced my sister, who was uh, 19 years old, a a sophomore at Temple, and she was home uh, one summer, and she was riding her bicycle and got hit head on by a car, Um, taken out of turn. What in the world? Those things in life that cause you to have an attitude. I don't understand things, God. What, what is this all about? 
or, or your brother comes out and shares with your family that he's gay, um, or whatever stuff that goes on in your life. You lost a loved one, and someone dies of cancer, and all kinds of struggles. That can give you the wrong attitude. You can be angry and frustrated, and, and, uh, and I'll be honest, as an African-American man, some of the influences in Washington, D.C. at the time was causing me to be frustrated and angry. I was a young, young man still living in my angry self until the word got a hold of me, and I read Philippians 2.5 that says, my attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, not of anything in this world, but I have to humble myself in all situations and circumstances. And so God was slowly changing me even though I was still at times looking through the wrong lens as I went through life. Because I'd be on a job and saw the boss trying to make some moves or people trying to undercut you on the job and I started to get nervous. Started being uncertain about what's gonna happen. I don't know if I'm gonna get fired or I'm gonna get laid off from the job. But that's because I was looking at circumstances with my eyes. And I discovered in the word that it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7 that we are to live by faith, not by sight. I gotta trust the invisible God who's working in my life. I can't go by what my eyes see. My boss isn't in charge at the end of the day. It is God who's in charge of my job. And so I was growing and coming to understand the importance of having an authentic relationship with Christ. That's what I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about understanding what it is when you're hanging out with somebody that you love. Um, that's a, a, a loving relationship, an authentic relationship. So get that person in your mind right now, somebody that you love, whether it's a spouse or close friend or something of that nature. When you're in a relationship with someone that you love, one of the things you do is you're always showing up. You're being available. You're present for them. Got to be available so that you're connecting with them all the time. You're also regularly having conversation. You're talking with that person. You're walking with that person. You're having discussions on all kinds of subject matter. And you're spending time together getting to know one another, and, uh, and just building your relationship, your love relationship together. And as it is in that love relationship, whoever you have in your mind, authentic relationship with God is somewhat similar to that. You have to show up at church regularly. Man, go ahead and preach, Pastor Kevin. You got to show up at church regularly and you got to come on time because it's not just about the word, it's about the worship and entering into God's presence. And once you arrive, you got to give your undivided attention. Oh, man, I'm going to preach on that just for a moment if I could. Because I've visited other churches. I'm fortunate that God has sent me out to other ministries to preach other ministries. And some of those churches, they begin their worship. They're on their phone all the time. And they're working all these devices. And I said, that's not preparing for the worship and praying, beginning God's presence. you got to give God your undivided attention. Man, that's going to be another message right there. Giving God your undivided attention. Um, and we have to talk to God regularly through prayer, through meditation. We don't give that enough time. We do it in corporate worship, but you've got to have your own prayer closet, your own time where you're praying with God. And, uh, and one thing that my, my son has just started doing, which I really appreciate uh, about him, is, is taking time to meditate and just stopping and slowing down and trying to slow down your heart rate and thinking about how good God has been to you. We should just take some time. We should stop the service now. Just take time just to meditate. Just stop and just talk and just listen to God. That's a loving relationship. That's building an authentic relationship. I'm not just talking about being a Christian by name. I'm talking about being Christian by lifestyle and having a connection with God. That's the nugget for somebody. I want you to grab that. I'm not just talking about having a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm talking about having an authentic relationship with Christ. That's how you get connected to God. It's how you connect yourself with God. And so if you have a, a relationship with Jesus, you have already been blessed. Man, y'all missed a great point to shout right there. Sister Gwen, I'm not sure they're tracking with me. I'm going to have to help them here too. This is my second point. If you have a relationship with Jesus, then you are already blessed. Pastor Kevin, where are you getting that from? I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. Ephesians chapter 1 at verse number 3. You're going to get another chance to shout. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms, you heard it, with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Man, you missed another good time. Here, let me, let me do that again because somebody didn't hear it. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And so your relationship with Christ brings you spiritual blessings. If you accept Christ, 
the text there tells us you've already been blessed. Oh, my. Somebody, somebody didn't get it. Hold on. Let, let, me, let me back it up. You don't have to wait for your blessings. There's no supply chain issues. There's nothing on back order. You don't need to search for anything. They won't be there in a little while. They're not delayed. You receive them in the moment that you receive Jesus Christ. You gave your life to Jesus. You're filled with the Holy Spirit, and in that very instant, you're blessed. You received every spiritual blessing in Christ. This is what God gave me for you today. It ain't nothing fancy, but it's insight from his word that says, man, I have everything that God has for me already once I got saved. And let me tell you what that means also. It means all things have already been worked out. It means everything's preset. It means everything is already prearranged for your life and everything has been predetermined. Ooh, Lord. Glory to God. I'll take that one woo over here. I don't know if you've ever watched professional wrestling. Anybody ever watched a professional? The Hulk Hogan's back in the day and some of the professional wrestling. Um, I'm sorry to burst your bubble if you still believe in all that stuff. But the victor of the match was determined in advance. I'm glad there's no young people here that watch that because I didn't want to mess it up for them. It's not like boxing, Muhammad Ali and Mike Tyson days. You know, there's highs and there's lows and there's bumps and there's bruises. And in boxing, once you get knocked out by one of those guys, you are dedicated to the mat. You're not getting up. <laughs> but with professional wrestling, everything has been prescripted. It's a prescripted end. And God has already worked out everything in his favor. You know that God has already worked out in your thing, everything in your favor because of Christ's ultimate sacrifice on the cross. He's already worked everything out. This is why I tell folks sometimes, you don't have to worry about anything in life. There's nothing to worry about. Get into the word and discover who God is, and he's going to show you, I've already worked that out for you. I've already worked it out. You don't have to look at circumstances and wonder what's going to happen. God's going to work it out for his children who love him. And guess what? He, he also works out all the tough situations and circumstances in our lives, too. Whether you're sick in the hospital, you've got health issues, uh, if you've got trouble in your marriage, if you're going through some challenging circumstance with an individual, somebody's talking behind your back, God works all those things together for those who love him because he wants to bless you in more ways than you can imagine. How do I know that? Pastor Kevin, because in verse 28, it says, and it shows on our screen, that we know that in all things, y'all can preach it with me, that God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That means all things are included in the price that was paid on the cross. Oh, man, somebody's not tracking me. I'm going to help y'all a little more. It's like the man who goes on a cruise. You might not have heard this story before, but it's a man who goes on a cruise, and he paid in advance to go on the cruise. He gets on the cruise ship, and he's having a good time. And I've never been on a cruise, but he's doing all the things that people do on cruises, having fun, probably playing board games and all kinds of stuff. And at some point in time, he runs out of money uh, and becomes hungry. And he starts knocking on different doors on the, on the cruise ship, trying to find someone who can give him some money. Um, knocks on doors. No one's answering their doors. But he goes to the captain's door uh, and knocks on the captain's door. The captain opens up the door and he says, Pass, uh, Captain, can I, can I have some money because I need to get some food? And the captain says, well, did you pay to be on the cruise? And he says, yes. Uh, and he says, well, if you paid to be on the cruise, then it's all inclusive. And everything was already paid in the price that was paid when you got on the trip. Oh, somebody's tracking with me now. That's what I'm talking about. Everything's been captured in the price that was already paid. Do you know that's a true spiritual blessing? That's a true spiritual blessing. What, and, and, and I know you're wondering, what, Pastor Kevin, what are all, all the things you're talking about? What are all, the all things? And, and, and let me let you know that those things that master you don't master you anymore. That's included in the all things. Man, I'll take that one hand clap in the back. Those things that have, have had a hold on you, they don't have a hold on you anymore. Those things that keep you from God, they don't keep you from God anymore. Talk about true spiritual blessings. And it goes further that God doesn't just give us protection when we're in trouble and we're going through stuff in life. He makes us more than conquerors. Oh, man. We like that verse right there, verse number 37. Uh, no, in all these things, Paul tells us, we are more than conquerors 
through him who loved us. And I'm going to read down the rest of that too to let you know that God covers you in everything. He covers you in every. If you haven't gotten that so far through the message, I'm going to tell you that right again now. God covers you in every aspect of life. He's got you covered. But don't, don't believe me. Go to your word. Read your Bible because it tells you right here. It says neither death nor life. You know what that means? He's covered the earthly realm. God's got you covered from the very beginning to the very end. Neither angels nor demons. You know what that means? That he's covered the spiritual realm. God is in charge. At the end of the day, the enemy doesn't have any say-so. God has the final say. Neither present nor future. That means God covers all of time nor any powers. And I said it before, God is over the boss on your job. And at the end of the day, God has final say-so. Woo, that's a, jump, that's a jump and shout for somebody on their job that's going through it right now. Neither height nor depth. That means he covers all of space. And if you had any question, if you had any doubt, it says, nor anything else in all creation. I call, I call that the catch-all clause. He leaves out nothing, covers everything else in creation. And so if you're dealing with divorce or a recent breakup, I came to preach to you this morning to let you know you are more than a conqueror. Y'all got to help me with this part here. If you're unemployed or you're underemployed, you're more than a conqueror. If you're feeling harassed or mistreated or discriminated against, you're more than a conqueror. Y'all can say it with me. If you got a bad grade at school or on a test, you're more than a conqueror. If your do doctor gave you some bad news, you're more than a conqueror. If you lost a loved one and now you're all alone, you're more than a conqueror. If you're struggling with addiction, drugs or alcohol or sex addiction, you're more than a conqueror. If you're st struggling with anxiety or depression, you're more than a conqueror. If you're dealing with anger issues in your life, you're more than a conqueror. If you're in the hospital, you're homesick, you're more than a conqueror. If you're struggling in your marriage, you're more than a conqueror. I can come and keep going. If you're overweight and struggling with your diet, you're more than a conqueror. And anything the enemy tries to throw at you, you got to remember, you're more than a conqueror. Amen. God is stronger. God is stronger. God is stronger. God is stronger, and he's not just going to, going to defeat those things. He's going to make you more than a conqueror. This is how the word inspires me. I get inspired by the word. God has blessed you, and it's up to you to move out into each one of the blessings that he has for you. I'm saying it, brother. <laughs> point number three. Point number three, and I'm coming to a close. The spiritual blessings of Christ supply you with an overflow of God's love. Man, if you haven't enjoyed the word so far, here we come. We're going to bring it home now. The spiritual blessings of Christ supply you with an overflow of God's love. And this is how I know if I'm in here at the right church. How many of y'all want an overflow of God's love? And every hand went up in the sanctuary. That's what I'm talking about. I want the overflow. I want the overflow. Why don't y'all just reach up in the air right now and say, I'm going to grab the overflow. I want, I want everything that God has for me. I'm going to grab it. Keep grabbing in the air right now. I want, I want to get everything that God has for me. I want the overflow. How do I know God provides an overflow? 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8. You can put that one up on the screen. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. My, my, my. Somebody didn't get that. Let me, let me say that one again. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. This is the word that God has for you today. God doesn't want to just bless you. He wants to bless you abundantly. And that verse just blew my mind when I started to read it and meditate on it because he says it doesn't want to just bless you abundantly, but I want to bless you in all things, at all times, so that you have everything you need. That's an amazing God. I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm sweating. I'm exhausted now just on that word right there. He's giving you the overflow. He's already giving you the overflow. Once you got saved, he's giving you everything that you needed in abundance, in abundance. Here's what Timothy said. 
He says in 1 Timothy chapter 1 at verse 14, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. You are abundantly blessed. You're abundantly blessed. God doesn't want, he's not called us to live lives that are just enough. He wants us to live lives that are more than enough. There's always an overflow cup of blessings flowing for you. You know God's got a couple of overflow blessings for you in this section over here. He's got a couple of overflow blessings for y'all over here. He's got a couple of overflow blessings for y'all on this side. And I won't forget y'all's side over here too. He's got blessings that will overflow for you. Overflow blessings. God always has an overflow of his goodness and his love and his mercy and his grace and his long suffering. And God gives you the self-discipline and the character and the integrity that you need. That's the overflow of the blessings that you that he has for you. It's beyond the brim, it's running over, it's abounding, it's having surplus, it's plenty. Watch this, and it's more than enough. It's more. You can't handle all the blessings he has for you. You can't even handle it. I dare you to reach out to the blessings that God has for you. Try and take all of them. I want, I'm trying to get all of them. I want all of them. I want all of them. That's what I'm saying, sister. I want everything he has. But watch here. Here's how the overflow occurs. And so when you take your eyes off your own struggle and start praying for others who are struggling, he heals you and he begins to bring you out. And when you take your focus off just providing for your own needs and begin to generously give and help others, he opens the door for you. He gives you an income increase and he makes a way for you. And when you take your eyes off of yourself and start being a blessing to others, watch this, he blesses you. He doesn't just bless you. Oh, I'm not done. Don't clap yet. Hold on. He doesn't just bless you, but he blesses you and your family, and he blesses your children, and he blesses your children's children, and he blesses your children's children's children, and he blesses your children's 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 children, and generations and generations to come. That's the overflow. That's the overflow that he has for you. Pastor, Someone said right now, I, I want to be blessed in all things at all times so I have everything that I need in my life. If that's you and you kind of just said that to yourself, let me tell you how to go about doing that. First, you have to be born again. Yes. You have to take the very first step and accept the invitation that God has for you to come and, ex and, and experience the love of Jesus Christ. Many of us here have, have, have taken that step, but... I want to let you know that there's so much more love than you, ex you could ever imagine when you come across to the other side. He's got so much more for you, so much love for you. And so that's the first step. You have to be a born-again believer. And then you got to get thirsty. you got to be hungry for God. you got to go after him and seek him and find him. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Uh, and the more you desire him, watch this, the more grace He's going to give you. The more grace you're going to enjoy, the more joy you're going to experience, the more kindness you're going to have, the more love you're going to have pouring from your heart because when Christ is central in your heart, it's supposed to pour out of you. It's supposed to come out of you, ooze out of your pores, and everyone can see. And you walk into a room and say, that must be a man of God. That must be a woman of God because I can see Christ, the light of Christ that comes from their life. So you got to get thirsty and hungry for God. And watch this. And you also have to be a blessing to others. He wants you, if you want to experience the overflow, you got to learn how to lead others into the kingdom. Ooh, that's, that's, that's a high calling right there. Got to be able to go out and not keep Christ secret, but when you're in CVS or out in the supermarket or in some stores, shouldn't be all getting all attitudes with the people who are there at the cash register. Don't give all the, 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 the waiters and servants in, in the restaurants attitude because the service wasn't fast enough. They can't see Christ that way. Man, I'm preaching a hard message right there. Right? But you got to be loving. You got to smile. Even if you're not getting good service, you still got to be respectful. So we want to draw them. We want to leave open a witness so they can come into the kingdom and experience the goodness and love that we experience here in church too. Amen. Amen. Man, I, I ended on a hard note. I know somebody might get convicted on that part right there. I'm done with my message. And uh, I just want to just put out a lifeline to somebody who may be listening online or here in person. Um, I would want to tell you, you know, just to speak honestly with you just for a moment, you don't have to wait for any special day to give your life to Christ. 
New Year's is gone, Christmas is gone, but you don't have to wait till next New Year's or next Christmas. You can give your life to Christ today. Um, and so if you knew that God was working in your heart and you sensed um, something that God was drawing you to him, I want you to take that first step and just step towards him. I guarantee you it'll be the best step you've ever, the best thing you've ever, the best decision you've ever make, made in your life. Today is Decision Sunday. Every day is a decision that you can make. And so if that's you, I want you to reach out. Um, it, uh, we'll have a prayer team that'll be out here in just a few moments. You can talk to somebody who's here in the sanctuary. And if you're online, you can feel free to contact someone in the church. Um, and if you know that you've been away from the church for a while or you haven't been living up to the word as you know that you, you were probably raised in the church uh, and, and know uh, all about God and, and how God works in your life and know the right thing that you're supposed to be doing. And if you've been away from doing the right things and you want to come back, God says, I got open arms for you. This is a loving church, and we'd welcome you back to the fold as well. You can come on home today too, uh, and I want to leave that out there. And if you're just looking for a loving church, Pastor Paul who brings the word every Sunday and blesses us, and this is a loving church of, 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 uh, of Christian believers who would just want to embrace you and put our arms around you. If that's what you're looking for, you can come on today. And if there's something that spoke to you about this message that pricked your heart, that touched your mind, um, I want you to also respond today as well. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just take an opportunity for you just to close your eyes. I'm going to let God work just for a moment. Just bow your head and close your eyes. Um, and if God is speaking to you here today, I'm just going to ask that you would just put your hand up. If there's anybody here today who has never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, just stick your hand up. I'm not going to call you. I'm not going to call you up. Just put your hand up. I just want to see if you're here and where you are. I see that hand in the back there. Thank you for your honesty. You can put the hand down. <laughs> anybody else? First, first time, I, I just want to uh, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You can just slip your hand up so I can see. If that's not you and you say, well, I've been away and I know I've been living right I want to I just respond to God right now, too. I see your hand, brother. I see that hand. Um, you can slip your hand up, too. I just want to recognize your presence that's here with us and God's work. And I see your hand, my sister. I see my hand, my brother in the front. You can put your hand down. And if something about this message spoke to you today, I want to see your hand. Put your hand up, too. I see those hands. There are hands going up around the sanctuary. God is speaking in this place. The Holy Spirit is ministering to folks right now. Thank you. Thank you for your honesty, brother. You can, on my left, you can put your hand down too. Anybody else that says, I, God is speaking to my heart today. I need to make some changes in my life. I can't keep doing the same thing. I see you, my brother. Thank you for your hand. I see those hands in the back there too. God is working. God is working in this place. Thank you, Lord, for being so good, so good to us. You can open your eyes. Hey. God is good. God is good. We're uh, about to close our service for today. And uh, what I'm going to ask the, uh, to do is just stand with me before we leave. If the prayer team is here, anybody from the prayer team, if you would come to the front and um, we're about to open our prayer lobby as well. Um, we have a Zoom prayer lobby. You simply go to our homepage, our DCF homepage uh, and click on the prayer lobby button and there's somebody who will be there to pray for you. Um, if you know that you need to, to talk to somebody, if you made a commitment today of some sort or um, you need to just express something that you heard or God spoke to you through the message. I want you to speak to one of these people uh, who's up front, our prayer team, and, uh, and I'll be here hanging out after service um, as well. All right, we're going to pray and then dismiss. Uh, God, we thank you for a wonderful time basking in your presence today. Thank you for watching over your word as you off, always do. Thank you for blessing us, God, and thank you for making us a blessing as we go out into the world, God, we pray that you would continue covering us and protecting us um, and uh, watching over our lives. Pray that you would continue to bless each one of the families that's represented here as well as online. And uh, until the next time that we meet, God, we pray that we continue to do your work and to glorify you in all the things that we do. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said together, amen. amen.